tips the pros use to make great drinks at home. First, I'm gonna go through everything uh, that you'll need for tonight's session. But if you click through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits on our registration page and purchase the rum cocktail kit, well, you have almost everything you need. The profits from those kits go to off their plate. And this is a great charity that buys meals from restaurants that need to do the business and distributes them to frontline workers and other people in need. Uh, all the while, we'll be taking um, questions from the chat. So welcome and let's get started. We're gonna need some rum, right? So if you got the kit, you got this beautiful plantation three star, which is what I'm gonna be mixing with. Uh, but there's lots of other rums out there. There's this gorgeous white rum by Bully Boys this is local. This is made right in Boston. Um, another great local company, Privateer, makes all kinds of really stunning expressions, only with the best ingredients and always with the best practices. Uh, if you're a little bit of a nut like me and you've been doing this for a while, you might step up to some fire sauce, AKA Daddy's Ruin, the Jamaican Firefly here. This is Smith and Cross. Uh, we're gonna just keep that down here till later, okay? We're also gonna need uh, some simple syrup, one-to-one -one sugar and water, a um, bit of uh, fresh squeezed lime juice. I, uh, I did this a few minutes before we got started. And um, I'm gonna use some Peychaud's bitters here. This is, uh, I guess not required, right? But to me, this is the salt and the sauce. It's really kind of, fun little ingredient it pulls this drink together and takes it to the next level. Um, for equipment, we're gonna need a shaker. I've got a tin on tin here by Craft House. Um, one of those three piece cobble shakers work for you, a Boston shaker set. If you do not have a shaker, um, you can always MacGyver it with a little something like this. This is a uh, quart two cup container that I sometimes use. You can pack your ingredients in here, a nice tight seal, you can shake it. Um, other Tupperware might do the trick as well. Uh, you're going to need a strainer. I've got a Hawthorne strainer here and a tea strainer. You can either or or both will work. And you're going to need something to measure with. These are the jiggers that we use in the bar. And they have like compound relationships that really work out when you're making lots of drinks really fast. But um, if you don't have that, then just a, a tablespoon will do you. The tablespoon's half an ounce. So you can convert any of these recipes quickly. Uh, by using a tablespoon, it's a very accurate uh, unit of measure. Um, I, I use it sometimes at home. It's just uh, not quite as fast in the bar room, so that's why you don't see us use it there. You need something to make juice. This is what I use to, uh, to make a little of this lime juice. Um, if you don't have that and you have a little reamer, you can do that, or you can slice it up into quarters and just kind of juice it by hand if you need to. Or... Making our garnish, I've always got a cutting board out, some tongs, I like to be able to move stuff around without touching it if I need to, uh, and a little plate helps serve that. The glassware for tonight, um, I think you wanna go either uh, rocks or a cocktail glass for your daiquiri or your daiquiri timeout. Uh, and then for uh, the rum tonic, which sounds simple, but is really a, a, a voyage of unusual and extraordinary delight, um, you may like I do want to go into a classic highball. I really love the funnel on that. I, uh, most times I, I prefer to drink the drink kind of focused like that uh, straight to me. Um, but a wine glass works great too. And in other moods, when you want to kind of slosh it around a little bit, that's, uh, that's also something good that you can use. Of course, you're going to need some ice. Ice equals civilization. And ice is what makes the train run here at Cocktail Village. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, without further ado, Will Izaza is an East Boston born and raised local bartender. A first generation Colombian American, he's dedicated to promoting the Latin voice in our hospitality industry. He's been making daiquiris since before he could drink them and he's the 2019 USA Bacardi Legacy National Champion for his cocktail Gloria. Currently at Ivory Pearl and Blossom Bar, with the fanciful title of Master Chief Mars Capone, which I figure is kind of director of ops and other, uh, and other such things. Um, he's an excellent bartender, a fellow rum lover and a friend. He's working, but like all of us in this injury, he's hurting a little bit right now. So you can get down on the tip jar. That's his Venmo. Hey, welcome, welcome. Will, it's great to see you, buddy. Jax, how's it going, man? Great to see oh, you too. Man, living my best virtual life. How about you? Yeah, I hear that. It's kind of... Uh... The life of a bartender nowadays is very virtual, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, light at the end of the tunnel, we hope. Where, where are you broadcasting from? 
tonight. Uh, so yeah, we're here at the uh, beautiful Ivory Pearl Bar, um, right on bar. So I've actually got my screen set up as if you were the guest, and it's uh, you know it's nice. <laughs> I like uh, kind of like having a bar guest again. It feels uh, feels great. Well, glad to be there. Are you open any hours at Ivory Pearl right now? So right now, Ivory Pearl, we actually just went into our sort of shutdown phase for the winter. Um, we're working with our creative juices once again um, to see, you know, how we can reopen in the spring with a full patio. And, you know, hopefully by that time, the capacity restrictions are a little bit uh, more lenient. The space is very small. So, you know, we, we just kind of have to do what's best for, for what the space calls for right now. Um, that being said, we still are uh, have our gift cards available online for when that time does come. Um, quick little email to inquiry at ivoryprobar.com um, and we'll be able to send that gift card to you. We do electronic, so it's sent to your email or text message or whatever whatever fashion you prefer. And um, yeah, obviously it'll, it'll be good to use for, the, uh, for once we, we're fully up and running again. Sounds like a great winter gift that somebody could also give a friend and, you know, uh, with the sentiment of looking forward to patio season and, and brighter times ahead. At Blossom Bar, you're open though, right? Yes, Blossom Bar, we are. We are fully open. We're doing six days a week as of right now, um, Tuesday through Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. To, to the curfew time at the moment, which is 9.30. Um, but yeah, we're, we're fully operating there, both dine-in and takeout. Still doing our craft blossom mixers, which uh, were a huge success back in the first lockdown. Uh, now that we're able to do to go cocktails, that's uh, something that we're pushing as well. Our full cocktail menu is available, ready to drink in single serving fashion. And then, you know, the, the one thing we love, our bartender choices, you know, give us a call, put in a drink, and we can more than happy to create a, something special for you to take home. Well, that's outstanding. I love both those places. I look forward to seeing you in person there. Um, what do you say we, uh, I'm getting a little thirsty. I don't know about you. What do you say we whip up a cocktail here and keep talking over a drink? Let's do it. I'm ready. So I set up the kits for everybody with uh, the ability to do this daiquiri timeout. So we can talk a little bit about why we call it that and such. Um, but let's, uh, let's go nice and slow, load up our ingredients here. The base of this is really... Um, you know, the, the sugar and lime mix, right? So I'm gonna start with those ingredients first um, and I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And this is just a one-to-one -one simple syrup. You can get fancy and go with a little bit more density. I, I really like it that way. You just take sugar and water, uh, mix them together with ever so slightly enough heat just to get them to fuse and then cool it and keep it around. Um, fresh squeezed lime juice kind of uh, about, uh, about a half hour old at this point, getting into kind of the sweet spot. Um, and then whatever amount of those two things I did, three quarters of an ounce of each, I'm gonna double that uh, or maybe a little bit more in my rum. Today, I'm gonna do two ounces or four tablespoons of this Plantation Three Star Light Rum. Oh, I just got a whiff of it, that smells outstanding. Um, and then a little bit of secret sauce here. We're going to do uh, just a dash of Peychaud's bitters from New Orleans. People always ask me to describe this flavor profile. No, Will, for, for me, it's seville orange and coriander with like a little bit of dill or hibiscus or something herbal back there. Just a few drops in here kind of really makes the, the whole thing go. Um, and I'm about ready. Now, you did something a little different. Let's tell, before we get the ice in the shaker, what'd you do? Yeah, yeah, my secret sauce is a little bit different. I'm a little bit more tropical, warmer weather kind of guy. So for my daiquiri timeouts, I like a little, just like a little hint of uh, pineapple juice. Dole works just as great, um, that little extra sugar bump. But honestly, it really gives it that tropical feel other than just, you know, your traditional, very refreshing, very um, line focused daiquiri, that little hint of pineapple really, really goes a long way. So we, I did a quarter ounce uh, or roughly two tablespoons um, if you're using a spoon at home, but um, you'll see that it kind of frosts up really nice and gives it that little extra tropical note. Well, that explains why I drink it at your place. It's so well textured and just like that fun kind of prickly that it is. I'm going to throw some ice in the shaker. I'm going, uh, I'm going to do mine in a a pretty little coupe glass. And I'm gonna throw an ice cube in there uh, just to get a little chill on the glass. 
you know, in the restaurant, a lot of times we have them in the freezer at home. You can have them in the freezer. Um, this is just one of those things. I, I guess it's uh, not really a trick if you just think about it. But but the reason we do it is, you know, the first taste of this drink is going to be great no matter what. But in a chilled glass, shaken properly, served just so, that last sip will be even better too. So um, I'm going to load my ice in here and we can go up and start a shaking. Your Zoom kind of filters out repetitive sound, so I'm not sure those of you at home are getting this same chaka that Will and I are getting in our ear, but for me, it's a uh, downright Pavlovian sound of cocktail being shaken just makes my mouth water every time. And you say how long to go, you know, sort of feeling the ice getting thrown around, you can kind of feel the, the tin get frosted over. Um, and here. And we're going to strain it out here and I'm going to let mine be just like clean and clear and ever so slightly pink. Ta-da! Going to make it pretty there, Will? Going to make it oh, pretty, well, yeah. Hey, here's to you, my friend. Hey, cheers, Jax. Cheers to you. Oh, so great. people are asking why it's called a, oh yeah, yeah that takes, that's, a, you know, it's funny, people asking about this as a summer drink. This is an absolute year round staple for me. It's like, you know, is, is saying steak, something you only have in the summer. I, I, I couldn't possibly call this a seasonal drink. It's so timeless for me. Absolutely. I mean, it's, there's no, there's no wrong or right weather for it. It's all right. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's the way to go every time. So uh, quick question from the chat. They're asking if this drink can work without the lime or uh, without lime juice. I, you know, you can make a, a daisy of a sort with lemon juice, but if you take the, if you take this out altogether, you're, you're just making an old fashioned, I guess. Uh, if you take the citrus out altogether, it's just sugar and booze and a little bitters in my case. Um, people asking why we call this a daiquiri timeout. You know, I, I had a chance to text a little bit today with the creator of the term, or at least its foremost propagator, Andrew Dietz, a good friend of ours, literally went bar to bar, you know, just in such an evocative way when he was selling for a particular company saying, I don't care if you use my product or not, but wouldn't it be cool if every menu in town had like some little variation of a daiquiri, we could call it a daiquiri timeout. He started that Facebook group and they go on these pub crawls. <laughs> and uh, it's just one of those like kind of crazy moments in full circle where he's in coming off of a skiing trip in Denver and he sees the, the, the bartenders huddle over in the corner of the bar. I'll take a little shot. And he's like, what was that? I was like, oh, we, we sometimes take this small sip of a daiquiri when we're working together we call it a daiquiri timeout literally saying it's something that got started in boston to the guy who started it um and now it's just uh considered a kind of de rigueur way to like reference a handshake and daiquiri especially when you make those little pushes and pulls on it that make it distinctive to a place or to the kind of flavor that an individual bartender is going for in the moment so it's uh he he was happy to see the the words out there and in the internet and, and on people's minds and being uh, shown, even if we can't be doing it in the bar space tonight, you know? Yeah, Andrew, I mean, really good friend and colleague too. It's, it's like, I don't know what your first experience with the DTO was. I'm pretty sure mine was sitting at your bar or at least one of your bars. And um, not that I'm encouraging this, but uh, <laughs> my experience with it was, you know, the whole version of the timeout. It sort of evolved into now being like small little shooters but, you know, I, I guess I was being uh, sort of initiated into, into this culture with, uh, I was told was you actually shoot the entire cocktail, not a shooter, right? So um, that was my first, uh, my first Eastern Standard uh, daiquiri timeout was definitely. Well, and, and, and somewhere between the two is like uh, to treat it like the owl with the Tootsie Roll. You know, you take a one, a two, yep. a three, yep. and it's, you know, like if it's, if it's a good daiquiri, you know, it'll, it'll be delicious through those three sips. 
Um, people asking about that pineapple juice trick. Yeah, uh, not a trick, I would say, but um, they were saying, did you do that instead of Peychaud's? And I said, I, 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 that's my understanding is, is yes, right? Yes, definitely. I, I mean, I did, I did do it instead of, not to say that, you know, if you included it with the bitters, it would be just as delightful, um, just as tasty. Again, all those sort of like small anise notes look it, really, really well. Is that the house recipe? Um, is that the house recipe at Blossom Bar? Or is that? Yeah, house recipe. I don't, if I don't ask for it, if I don't, I'll just be getting it. Yeah, it's a, it's our little our little cheat, if you will, or a little treat for uh, for everyone. Everybody always manages to say that our daiquiris are are so much more tropical than what they're used to. We do add a little quarter ounce of pineapple juice in there, so um, it's really nice, it's really special, you know. So, by way, I think a fun way to do this uh, to talk about very briefly just a little bit of the different rum styles. Maybe you could go through a few of your favorites and. I don't know if I want to limit you, but maybe four or three, three or four, like, and maybe show the, show the group some of the bottles of rum that you like, um, especially as pertains to like uh, a different ways of doing a daiquiri. And then we can, what, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? I showed them a few at the, at the start, but we show us a couple of the good bottles. You Absolutely. Got there. So, I mean, we have here actually right here, see if I can do that. Uh, <laughs> our rum shelf over at Ivory Pearls conveniently placed right behind me, but um you know, nowadays, being able to be a part of this culture at a, in a bigger scale, we have the, the opportunity to, to go out and, and potentially select our own barrels of, of things. So these two actually bottles right here are our first two barrels for our first two years of being open. Um, the, one, the red label there is actually our 2020, 2021 edition, uh, which is a great um, Jamaican blend. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jamaican style rums, you know that. Hey, 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 Will, can you pop up, grab the bottle and bring it down to yeah. the camera, closer to the camera for us? Awesome. So here we have sort of our two different versions that uh, we were able to select between the years of 2019 and this year. Um, this green label here, as you can see, it has the uh, Baldwin Bar logo there, which is one of our other bars. Um, we were selected, we selected this at the beginning, I believe, or the end of 2018-ish. Uh, finally received it in 2019. Um, it's, a, it's a great, um, this one's Trinidadian style, uh, 2009 vintage uh, that has been uh, finished in what I believe is Pinot de Chiron barrels. So it does give it like a little extra sweetness, um, which is really nice. And honestly, these guys really do an amazing thing with their finishing of, of their rums in addition to the aging process that it already goes through. So um, for this year's edition, um, we got a nice and kitschy here with uh, hand selected by the Marscapone gang, which is, uh, you know, just a little fun with, uh, with our group here. Um, but this is a 2007 Jamaican from two different uh, Jamaican distilleries from uh, Camden and Long, or sorry, Clarendon and Long Pond. Um, it's roughly 12 years uh, blend, and then it is finished six months in... Uh, um, I believe is, yeah, soft term, soft term barrels. So again, it kind of softens that Jamaica rum is, is, is sort of notorious for being the super funky, crazy, um, what we like to refer to as dunder, um, you know, just funk is the best way to describe it for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and this kind of softens that a little bit, which honestly makes it very, very, very mixable, which, you know, has always been our goal. Um, being able to have some mixing rums. Aside from these two, um, you know, Banks is one of my favorites. Uh, it's been one of my favorites for a very long time. You know, I think a, a good industry friend acquaintance for both of us uh, had a, a hand in, in uh, creating this rum. So contrary to popular belief, this so this particular rum, the, the number here is not actually the age statement. It's actually 23 different rums from seven different locations, uh, which is what makes it so special. You know, it's blended perfectly, blended for mixing and, and um, kind of a great segue here. It, it, for me, it's the best sort of two ingredient rum that, that you can find for this price point for sure, so. Right, well, yeah, people, people were a little shocked to think that I would put a rum tonic into a cocktail thing, but I would love it if you would kind of take us through 
building it. And I'll just say in, in advance, like to me, this is like a sacrament, you know, like I drink these at different times in different places. And I'm the guy that's like orders three because there's three, two of us and I want somebody else to try it. And before you know it, I'm back getting seven more. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and the intention and, and possible variations are so many. Uh, right. I'd love for you to take us through making a, a rum tonic to have together. Yeah, definitely. So again, great segue into this. We're going to be using, or I'm going to be using our uh, Bank 7 uh, aged rum here. You know, feel free to use your favorite rum. For some people, that might not necessarily be an aged rum. It could be a light rum. Um, but I would typically recommend something richer with a, with a little bit um, sort of like a heavier molasses focus to it to, to really get that bitterness from the tonic. I was off camera there for a minute before Will's phone rang and it was because I was getting my tonic, which I always keep as cold as possible and bringing it out here on ice wasn't gonna be quite as good as keeping it in the fridge. So that's what I ran off to do. That's it's your right. glass there, beautiful frosty just, glass too. Just went over to do, to do something similar, you know, being a, a two ingredient cocktail, only you know there are a few little things that that would really make or break this being just a regular mixed drink to an amazing refreshing cocktail for any day and that is definitely temperature you know for me having a very very cold glass obviously we have the luxury of having chillers at, at our bars but you know if you just throw some ice in here uh with a little bit of water and just kind of let that chill for a few minutes right before you get into making your drink um it'll really set it over the top. That temperature will really uh, make a huge difference if you're pouring anything warm into, into a glass. Um, so that being said, the tonic obviously being super cold uh, would help with that. And it also you know, helps with carbonation. It, it keeps that carbonation kind of stable. And then as co the colder it gets, the colder it is, the, co co the closer to freezing point you can get, that carbonation really holds. And that's really a huge part of this drink. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, Put a few cubes in here. You know, this again, being only a two ingredient cocktail, as we mentioned, ice is super important. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is, is ice trays at home have the actual the potential to make very dense and, and good ice or what we refer to as good ice. Um, and as long, just make sure you keep those ice trays filled, you're ready to go. So I'm gonna use a traditional highball here. I put about three cubes in there. Um, and I like to build this drink in a very traditional highball style fashion, which is, um, you know, we're going to put in our spirit first over the ice. Again, everything's super cold with the exception of our spirit. We're going to go two ounces here. And then if you have those really nice dense cubes that you can get out of your ice trays, once you pour that rum in there, it starts that chilling of the spirit and you do need a little bit of dilution. You know, again, this is one of those drinks that we're not gonna shake or stir or stir significantly. As soon as you put that ice in there, just take a couple quick little one or two stirs to your spirit. So it actually starts kind of working that, that water into the, uh, into the rum. And then again, keeping your tonic as cold as possible. You know, this is the, uh, the other variance in this drink, I would say, is you can kind of, uh, Add tonic to your liking. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of being able to taste the rum that I just uh, put in there. So I usually stick to the uh, four to two ratio, four ounces of tonic to two ounces of rum. Um, but again, that can change if you like, want a little bit more sweetness or a little bit more bitterness, you can add a little bit more tonic. I would say six ounces is really like a good, a good cutoff benchmark for you. Um, so you don't get kind of overly sweetened or overly bitter and you have a nice still balanced drink. Uh, so once that goes in, you know, again, we are pouring ingredients on top of each other. So we do want to give it like a quick little stir, just kind of move the ice around a little bit so that it fully incorporates. You don't want to agitate the bubbles too much. Um, and then as always, we got to make it look pretty. We like doing these nice little lime dolphins. We're a little bit different than your traditional wedge. Um, we actually cut these here, I don't know if you can see it. We cut these along the flesh and the pith here. And if you have a nice thin glass like this, it kind of doesn't get in the way, leaves you a little bit of room for sipping and you can just enjoy as needed. 
I personally, I'm not a huge fan of, of having straws in my drinks, but feel free to, to straw your drink if you need it. Sipping from the top, having that ice touch your lips every single time really elevates the experience for me. And the little lime wedge, again, if you need a little bit more, uh, a little more freshness, a little more citrus, uh, goes really well. So that is my version of the, of the rum tonic with our Bank 7 rum here and Key Tonic. That's awesome. I did a couple of lime wheels, friends, because I like to keep it wheel here, but... Cheers to you, Will. Oh, yeah. Now, I love that. It's like a good medicine to me that the, the tonic is. The, um, I admit that it's an acquired taste, and especially with people very sensitive to bitter, and sometimes uh, can, um, can be a little off-putting. So uh, being asked if we can do soda in that, I think a rum soda is great, obviously. Yeah. It's got uh, a little less going on. Um, but uh, you know, it's a, a great way to enjoy rum flavor being kind of unlocked by, um, you know, uh, by an intermediary. The um, some other questions about styles of rum: spiced rum and tonic may be the only kind of rum and tonic I have never tried, but I bet it works um, if you like spiced rum and you like tonic. The uh, I don't see any conflicts in that. And to talk to a little bit more um, about tonic. This is the Q Spectacular, um, you know, any great brand. There's, there's lots to choose from um, these days. And some of them are, are, are built off of, you know, real cane sugar or, or agave nectar. So you can kind of shop for things based around what you like to consume. Some are a little more intense, maybe made to, to um, you know, to stand up to juniper is kind of their origin um, for say like a gin and tonic. But um, if you know this this working as a gin and tonic into a rum tonic as a very different animal but I, there are lots of cocktails that segue very quickly back and forth between the two so if you're a gimlet fan like a handshake and daiquiri is going to be something that you enjoy uh it's really the same architecture with kind of a different different paint you know to me um any other brands of tonic that you like will yeah, I mean, a huge fan of Q. Um, for a while, you know, Fever Tree was the uh, was the preferred method of, uh, of of tonics for us. They they did they do add a little bit more sugar to their tonic um, that than what I remember before. But you know, it's again, it's sort of like that balancing act. As long as you pick a nice drier rum, just balance that tonic out. It's perfect. You know, we have actually going to reach back here for a quick second. We, as a company have a luxury of I saw a question there about tonic syrups so uh, mm -hmm. this is one of a way to segue into that answering that for you um, we have our own tonic syrup and this is actually how how we make our rum tonics gin and tonics any tonic drink um, we force carbonate everything in house but our, our recipe here is roughly four to one of uh, water uh, filtered water and our tonic syrup and then we carbonate all that we do add a couple dashes of bitters to, to sort of give it another element to it but our tonic in particular is heavy on grapefruit and heavy on bergamot so other than your traditional like quinine um, and bittering agents that tonic has you know by going out and buying a tonic syrup and using soda water instead is, is definitely a great route to go. If definitely, if you want to add, you know, add a little extra flavor. Um, most hey, of not to put you not to put you on the spot, but can we buy that from you? Yeah, absolutely. So we have these bottles here, tonic syrups, ready to uh, ready to purchase um, at all of our locations. Uh, Blossom Bar and Ivory Pearl will be the closest to you know downtown Boston or the Metro Boston area, but uh, Baldwin Bar has them as well, and. Um, we work with our really good friends at uh, Taylor Made Apothecary out in the Midwest, and uh, they, you know, we we formulated our own tonic for uh, for all of our locations. So um, soon we're gonna hopefully be able to bottle these in house and, and and actually give you the full bottled version, no mixing necessary at home, already carbonated and ready to go. Uh, that's something that we're working on now at Every Pearl as well. So stay tuned, stay tuned for that. Well, that's terrific. Hey, quick question, couple of couple more questions off the chat. Um, I'm going to answer one. Yes, he's dangled that lime wedge delicately and beautifully there for you to squeeze into your drink if you want a few more drops of lime or to not if you don't. Everybody's tastes are a little bit different. You get to play with your drink after it's served to you. That's absolutely okay. Yep. Um, I know people who need three limes. 
you know, they <laughs> like they won't won't drink their drink without them. Like they're stepping on a crack on the sidewalk. And then, hey, can you just go into like we we blew by the idea of what good ice is, and it, and I think it's worth for a second talking about, um, you know, uh, why and how we can make great ice at home and what makes that. Do you mind taking that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's you know, all of your ice trays at home, you know, your just traditional refrigerated ice trays would be sort of my recommended way to go. Um, any any machine or form of, of sort of cranking out ice at a high rate, they're sort of meant to crank out ice at a higher rate. So the density levels are not always there. It's not always the hardest ice, not always the coldest. So, you know, if you're making cocktails at home, I would always 100% recommend getting ice trays um, you know, there's a lot of companies that do these really fancy molds if you want some bigger ice, but to be honest, for you to just make drinks at home, shaking, stirring, just a very traditional uh, freezer ice tray works just as well. Um, there's a lot of ways you can get creative with, uh, you know, potentially making your ice super clear with some purified warm water, um, directional freezing and all that good stuff. But, um, you know, that's purely, in my opinion, visual. So it's, it's more like yeah, just having well, a nice dense piece. A great place to seek out more information about that kind of stuff is Cocktail Wonk. Um, not only uh, do the good people there pursue the, the purest um, rum, but they also give you lots of <laughs> lots of ways to use science in the home to kind of perfect your ice game and other techniques. Um, hey, I wanna encourage people to come visit you at Blossom Bar to get, you know, uh, gift cards looking ahead to a summer that's going to rival the Weimar Republic I'm pretty sure and party <laughs> time in Boston town Absolutely, yeah. um, and I just want to say you know thank you so much for taking time out um, having a daiquiri and a rum and tonic with me I really appreciate it Will. Thank you Jackson it's always a pleasure to, to see you a pleasure to chat. Well we'll have you back real soon and that's Cocktail Club for this week. Join us again every Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, next week's guest is Sabrina Kershaw, and we'll be making uh, drinks with rye whiskey. Super excited about that. Make sure to follow the link from our sign-up page to Gordon's Wine and Spirits to pick up that rye whiskey cocktail kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's Boston.com cocktail. Thanks again, Will. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.